And that, my friends, is what inflation looks like. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. So we have a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right into it. So first thing, there is a breaking news report that um, this is all I know. There was a gunman, and he was at the Mar-a-Lago uh, golf retreat, golf club for Trump. And it looks like, this is from my meme, uh, Secret Service was the one who opened fire. I guess there were shots fired after they saw a suspected gunman at Trump International Golf Club in Florida. Fox News states Secret Service fired the gunshots. It wasn't the guy. Secret Service saw a man carrying an AK-47. So I'm not going to go down this road because that's for the news outlets. You can go check that out. But right now, apparently they have this per person of interest in custody and there's a ton of things going on. So uh, to answer everybody's question, yes, apparently there was a gunman. Yes, he's in custody. And no, nobody really knows for sure what's exactly going on. So that will lead me to the next part, which is let's worry about the things we can actually control. And those things we can control are what we're actually investing into. So I want to take a look at where we are in the cycle as far as the four-year Bitcoin cycle, where we are as far as presidential elections, and how these things line up going all the way back to 2012. So we're going to take a look at this and a couple of different uh, indicators. So first of all, I was just perusing through the different data points. And, and uh, we do have a presidential election coming here in the United States. I know some of you who are not in the United States could, couldn't care less. And I understand I, I share your enthusiasm or lack thereof, but uh, it's something to note. And it seems like once everything's pretty much gets settled, and I've said this many a time on, on the show, I just wanted to kind of bring this home. When the markets understand and, and there's no ambiguity, and they go, okay, this is the guy that we got or the gal, whoever's going to win this time. Uh, so we know where we're going to go. We know we're going to expect. We, we know where, there's, where their policy is. We know where you know, the macro and it's, it's it, essentially where it's going. We know uh, who is going to be in the Federal Reserve, who is going to be the SEC, who's going to be the CFTC. We know that these people are going to be here or not there based on the person that is sitting in the presidential office or in the Oval Office. And because of that, I think that's where the markets really start to take off. Now, of course, we can take a look at, we talk about this on NFA Live quite a bit. Uh, what is the macro? Uh, are, are we headed for a recession? What is the employment rates? What are the payrolls? What is the, what is, what is the Fed actually doing as far as rate cuts? And what is quantitative easing actually doing as they're starting to print my money or not? I do not think we can actually go down this road if we hit a major recession or, God forbid, a depression. But I don't think that's on the table anytime soon. So we take a look at this. So what happened back in 2012, 2016, 2020, and eventually what's going to happen in like 54 days, there's gonna be a presidential election. And during that time, we see that there's, and this is just going back, and the only place you can find this historical price that, I, that I've ever found was 99bitcoins.com. Sound off in the comment section if you found someplace else, but this is the whole look. Now, this is looking at log linearly, or excuse me, logarithmically, because if I, do, if I do linear, it doesn't make any sense because this is what it looks like linear. So we got to go to logarithmic and taking a look back. So we can see that in 2012, this was the first Bitcoin halving. This was the year, the very first one after the Genesis block, all the way back to 2009. And we can see that during this time of 2012, we had a big chunk of nothingness, quite honestly. Just a little bit of little bit of bumps. I mean, you went from 750 to 10, woo. And then October 12, pretty good. Went back down to 11 and then 10. But around this time, see how flat it was? It kind of feels like that right now, right? We're in this flat stage. No one really knows what's going on. President gets elected. We know who it is. He takes office in January. Great. And then all of a sudden, like towards the end of the year, we do this. And we can see that in, actually, this was one of the weirder or the stranger Kind of somewhat stranger times because they had a double top, kind of like in 2021. We went from a price of below ten dollars, yeah, well, ten um, below eleven dollars, and shot all the way up to one hundred and thirty-one dollars. I think it was even more than that. Actually, I'm very sure it was. And that was in April. And we had a bit of a drop, a drop, and then in 2013 we went to a thousand. Can you imagine being down here, being one of the first ones, like Simon Dixon, who? Went in heavy with uh, Bitcoin around this time, or actually even back here, I think, 2010. To go from 12 bucks to $1,300, yeah, that's not bad. So that was the first one. Now we go, we jump forward to 2016. And we can see the same things happening, actually. In November 8th, 
2016. What do you call this flatness right here? I mean, we have a little bit of a bump. Didn't we just have a bump in March because of this thing called an ETF? We did. And we saw like a little bit of bump here. And actually, this is in June. But you can see how flat it was around here towards the end of the year. And then once we had 2017, what happened? We just took off. And we didn't stop until we had 20,000. 19,800, somewhere around there. So you can see that we were sub 1,000. And we did essentially a 20x. Not too bad. Then again, it happens again. We have... And that was the halving year of 2016. We had a halving year of 2020, and the same thing happens. So we come over here. See how flat it is right here? Again, June, to July takes a little bit of a, of a jump. Everybody's happy. And then we're flat. Nothing's really going on. The election happens. goes from 15,000 in 2020. Catapults itself to 50,000 in April. Excuse me. I'm sorry. 58,000. Takes a little drop a la 2013 and then hits its all time high around 67,000, somewhere around there, around November 8th or 9th. So, what happens again? Well, it's a funny thing because it's like this thing keeps repeating. And again, I have to reiterate I do not think that we can have a massive bull run if we get a major recession or a depression. People will say, but Rob, it's a store of wealth, it's a store of value, and it is digital gold. Yes, that's true. I think people will go to gold and some of the smarter people will go to Bitcoin. I shouldn't say it like that. I own gold, silver, and Bitcoin. So what am I saying? I think what they will think to themselves is I need risk off assets and like it or not, I still think a lot of people see Bitcoin as a risk on asset. But in the long term, I think this is the trajectory of where it's going. We have another election. Okay, we got this guy or this gal. We know what their policies are. There's no ambiguity. Let's run the market. Market runs up, we see a big a big push. I think the big gains come in 2025 and I still think they are. But the question is, where are we taking a look at cycles? This will be the last piece and we'll move on. Next, I wanna cover the uh, Coinbase rumor update and then also uh, pass phrase versus seed phrase. So this of course is Ben's site and uh, I steal from him all the time. Anyhow, what we're looking at is the market, market cycle five, which would be how it was laid out return on investment from the bottom. And the bottom of this last, this cycle that we're in right now was November 10th, 2022. I wanna say it was around 15,800. Just tell me in the comment section, somewhere around there. And then from there to here, the ROI was 4.5. It's pretty good. You know, you did a four and a half X. Right now we're sitting at a eh, 3.78. But what does that look like? And we've talked about this before, but I just wanna bring this home. What does that look like from the last cycle, market cycle four, look at that. We're pretty much right where we're supposed to be. Now there was a little bit of a push here as we, this would be in April, right after, or March, April or so, when we had a nice little push because of those beautiful ETFs. And in green was the last cycle. So it took a while to catch up, but it did. But we we're pretty much on point to doing the same thing we did last time. But what about the cycle before that, Rob? Well, here we are. Let me just blow this up so you can see it. This market cycle five, we're still right in between the last two cycles. So I feel, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, I feel like we got screwed out of a proper bull run because of the nonsense that was going on with Three Arrows Capital. FTX, Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, and whatever else shenanigans were going on behind the scenes that we will never know about. I feel like we should have run up a lot higher. So with us being in this channel, as far as return on investment between the last cycle, which was the 2020 to 2021, and the 2016 to 2017, I feel like we're in the right place at the right time. And that's where I see things going. And then lastly, because of, you know, people say, what about the volatility? The volatility... As time goes on, you understand that I think as time moves forward, the ROI for whatever you're investing into, especially with Bitcoin, is going to go down. But because of that, you're going to see less volatility. And this is a great piece. Take a look again at the cycles. From the top of the 2013 to the bottom, it was a 94% drop off. Then we had, actually, that was the first one, then 2013 again. In 2017 to the bottom, it was an 84% reduction. Then 2021 
which was no November 2021 to essentially November 2022 when FTX collapsed, it was only 78%. So look at this, 94% top to bottom, 87% top to bottom, 84% top to bottom, 78% top to bottom. And maybe the next one, once we get through 2025 and we will probably bottom out in 2026, maybe it'll be 72%. I have no idea. But these are just the things that we look at historically to see where we're going in the future. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Now let's get to some more good news. Tangent. So I had this question yesterday. And if you're looking for a cold storage device, I use two. I use Ledger and I use Tangent. I like them both. Uh, but uh, there was a question that says, and I had to send this out. I said, hey, can I create a new seed on Tangem, write the seed, go back, import the seed phrase, and choose a passphrase? Will this work? And first you have to understand, what the heck am I saying here? A passphrase versus a seed phrase, what is that? Well, a password, we all know that. We use those and we forget those and then we have to go and uh, you know send our text message or an email because we keep forgetting, maybe that's just me. A pin, we all know what that is, right? Debit card, credit card, getting into your Airbnb. Seed phrases are essentially those 12 to 24 words that you that is automatically generated by the wallet itself. You don't do anything. You just generate the seed phrase. You get those seed phrases are there. Private, private keys are safe. But the passphrase is one more step. And you can do this now in Tangem, and it's just one, essentially, password, the passphrase. And you can use this to create an, a numerous amount of uh, secret addresses and just one more step. So the example is someone comes to your house, rent a taxi, right? And they say, give me all your seed phrases because for some reason they know that. You give them your, their, their seed phrase, cool. They look at your, at your wallet and you're like, what is this? You only have a thousand bucks, you poor person. They take the thousand bucks and they leave. Little did they know that you had a passphrase because not too many people know about this. And you have a secret wallet which has $10 million into it. You can do that and they will never know that. And you just use your seed phrase and passphrase to get everything back. Pretty cool, right? So this wasn't allowed. And then just to bring this home, what is a passphrase? Passphrase is an extra word added to an existing seed phrase like we just talked about. It's 12, 24 word phrase. And I was looking through Tangem and it said that, uh, where did it say it? This is not here. Oh, they already updated it. Great. It said that it wasn't available, but I guess it is now available. And there was a great video. I forgot this guy's name. He's really good. He does uh, different uh, crypto uh, uh, content as well. It's not tangible answers because I know he's done other things like that. But he explains this uh, a little bit better, how to do it. It's about a six-minute video. If you're looking for that, there's a link in the description. You can check that out and watch that video. But question answered is that, yes, you can now have a passphrase to your seed phrase for an extra layer of security. But one thing to note, and that is that this, with passphrases, you're creating it. If you create it and you put, I don't know, tomato coin, and you capitalize the T in tomato coin, and maybe you put like an exclamation point after that, if you don't remember that, everything's gone in those secret wallets. So it's not like a seed phrase where it's like they generate for you, you do it, Make sure that you understand that a passphrase is case sensitive, meaning uppercase, lowercase, and it's also special character sensitive. So if you put an at exclamation point or an amper stance, you must make sure you include that or you will lose everything. Anyhow, so that's that piece. And then, 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 lastly, the uh, Coinbase rumors. I asked everybody to do their own research because I'm always skeptical about these things because, you know, but we have to make sure that we do our research in here and not just say, oh, it's just FUD, it's just FUD. We have to take a look at it, right? Bitcoin Therapist says rumors are circulating that Coinbase is running Bitcoin IOUs for BlackRock and they're suppressing price, which kind of sounded kind of funny because, you know, as a spot, with the spot ETF, you have to back a one-to-one. -one. That's a legality. That's for the SEC, even though they're kind of doing their job or whatever. So that's what's really happening. And then, of course, there was a lot of different data points that we took a look at. I linked this from yesterday. And uh, Jonathan sent me this. It was a post from Brian Armstrong. And he says, look, not sure what all this is about. To be honest, all ETF mints and burns we process are ultimately settled on chain. That's good. Institutional clients have trade financing and OTC options before trades are settled on chain. All right. 
This is the norm for all institutional clients. All funds are settled in our prime vaults on chain within about one business day. If you want audits, Deloitte audits us annually. That's a pretty big auditing firm. We're a public company, so they have to report the SEC. I doubt our institutional clients want people dusting all their addresses. And this sentence is important. I doubt <laughs> our institutional clients want people dusting all their addresses, meaning they're not going to give you their institutional clients Bitcoin addresses. There was a thing called proof of reserves. This isn't going to happen here. So on this quote, I get it sounds good, but it's looked like you got to trust them, bro. This is what it looks like if you want a bunch of institutional money to flow into Bitcoin. As for CDBDC, yes, you're trusting a centralized custodian to store the underlying Bitcoin. We've never claimed otherwise. So pretty good response. Not fantastically perfect. No, we're not going to get there. We're not going to get like, say, everybody's uh, Bitcoin address. So I'm like, okay, I can deal with that. But uh, I encourage everybody to uh, always keep pushing, always take a look as deep as you possibly can. If you find something, let me know on X. I'm always around there. So let me know what you think about that. But I will say one thing that struck me is that this was from, this is a screenshot. Today's September 15th, right? I'm right, right? September 15th. This was at uh, 1.28 a.m. I don't know. Brian must not sleep too much. And I maybe was watching the UFC fight. I don't know. But I was taking a look at his account. I don't see that post anywhere. So I don't know if he deleted it or or what. I don't actually, you know what? There's another thing we can check here. Let me see. Let's take a look at the replies. Maybe that's it. Uh, uh. Well, he retweeted Tyler's. Let's see. Let's see. No, nah, maybe I'm missing it. Anyhow, I'll link uh, his his account. You can check it out. But uh, that's what we have for today. And that's it for this piece. So look, if you like today's video, give a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.